Good evening. I am Liam E. Baxter, recorded artist and author. This is short story time theater with Liam Baxter, which is part of one of my podcasts on Frontier Web Singer called Web Speech Platform. Tonight I will be doing an interpretive reading of a story from my paperback book, Two Waldoville Tales. And it's called The Classroom Reading of Monty Mantis. Now, the classroom reading of Monty Mantis is also available as an ebook. And, and that's a single story book. The Classroom Reading of Monty Mantis. The story begins in Miss Felicity's class element at Waldoville Elementary School, the first day of spring in 1964. One Friday afternoon and the first day of spring in 1964, three close friends, Henry Bowman Jr., Sammy Schumann, and Gail Gunderson were enjoying afternoon recess at Waldoville Elementary School. When the bell rang and recess was over, Gail asked her two friends as they were walking back to their classroom, I wonder what book Miss Regans is going to read to us during afternoon story time. Henry replied, I hear she is going to read us the story of Monty Mantis. That story is so cool, I don't mind hearing it again. What's the story about? asked Sammy. It is about a praying mantis and his insect's friends, replied Henry. As soon as Henry, Sammy, Gail, and the other kids entered Miss Regan's classroom, the teacher said, Please take your seats. All the children sat down at their desks. Miss Regans then introduced the storybook she was about to read to the class. Today's story is Monty Mantis. Monty is a praying mantis. Anyone knows what a praying mantis is? Henry raised his hand. Yes, Henry, Miss Regans asked. My dad says a praying mantis is a very large insect, which is both a meat eater as well as a plant eater. That's correct, Henry, said Miss Regans. This story is about a young praying mantis named Monty and all his insect friends and some very important lessons they learned. So Miss Regans sat down in the chair opened the book and began to read the story of Monty Mantis. And now we switch to the story itself, the reading of Monty Mantis. Once upon a time, in the beautiful garden of Loopshire, which was a haven for a lot of different insects and other bugs, there lived a young praying mantis named Monty with his father, Pete Mantis. Pete spotted some young insects out playing, and he told Monty, Why don't you go play with the other insect kids? Okay, father, replied Monty. Among the other insect children, there were Roger and Wilbur and Archibald and Bubba B, Babette Butterfly, and Lola Ladybug. Soon Monty showed up on the scene with the other insects, and the other insects were glad to see Monty. Babbitt Butterfly flew over to where Monty was standing, and she asked him, Hi, Monty. Would you like to play with us? I'd love to, replied Monty. We are going to play and hang out at the big wood pile in the center of the garden, 
said Lola Lady, Ladybug. Just then, the parents of the other in, young insects showed up, and they didn't approve of their children having Monty as their playmate because he was different from them. There was Mama Ladybug, Mama Butterfly, the Queen Bee, and the Queen Ant. Babbitt, what do you think you're doing hanging around this praying mantis? Asked Mama Butterfly. Lola, I would like to ask you the same question. What are you doing hanging around this praying mantis? Asked Mama Ladybug. Monty is our friend, said Roger and Wilbur Ant. Don't talk back to grown-ups, yelled the Queen Ant. But Monty is our friend, said Archibald and Bubba Ant. You don't need friends like that, exclaimed the Queen Bee Mother. Monty, go home and don't let us catch you near our children again. Pete Mantis saw his son crying as he was returning home, and he asked his son, Monty, what's wrong? Didn't the other inchick children want to play with you? Yes, they did want to play with me, father, Monty replied. Their mothers didn't want them to play with me, and I think it's because I'm different than the other insect kids. Just then, Chester, the wise old walking stick, was passing by and overheard Pete and Monty. Greetings, Pete. Did I hear right? These parent insects won't let their kids play with your son because he is a little different than the others? Asked Chester the wise. That is correct, replied Pete Mantis. But the other kids wanted to play with me and hang out with me. They even asked me, said Monty. Then Chester, the wise old walking stick, spoke. You and your father have good hearts, which I have known for many years, and I consider you my good friends. The other insect children obviously see that too, which is why they like being around Monty. Right now, the parent insects don't see that. But if you continue to show that you and your son have good hearts, the parent insects will eventually come around too. Monty, what exactly did the other insect children ask you to do with them? They asked me to go play with them and hang out at the wood pile in the center of the garden, replied Monty. Chester, isn't that the woodpile, the home of Hag Hilty, the Black Widow Spider? asked Pete. It is, replied Chester to Wise. As you well know, Chester continues, spiders are not insects and they don't eat plants like we do. They eat meat, meaning they eat insects. There is also rumors that insect children like to bully and tease young Gertie. Hag Hildy's daughter when she wanders too far from the woodpile. If the insect children are going there to the woodpile to pick on young Gertie, Hildy won't take very kindly. These insect children are going to end up getting hurt or worse. Pete turned to his son and said, Monty, you must try to reach your friends before they reach the woodpile and warn them. Chester and I are going to go round up their parents. Unfortunately, the insect children arrived at the woodpile first, and they saw Gertie and began to bully and tease her. Well, if it isn't creepy Gertie, said Roger and creepy Gertie, creepy Gertie, chanted Wilbur Ant. You stop that, Roger and Wilbur, or I'll bite you, yelled Gertie. And we are supposed to be scared of you and your bite, Babbitt Butterfly mocked. Just then, an angry hag Hildy showed up and said, 
If you're not, you should be. The venom from our bites has been known to kill humans. How dare you trespass on my home and bully my daughter? I'm going to make an example out of you hooligan insects once and for all. Archibald and Bubba B flew to safety at the top of the woodpile along with Babette, while Hildy the Black Widow cornered and backed Roger, Wilbur, and Lola Ladybug up against the woodpile. Do you three have anything to say like an apology to my daughter? Just then, Monty Mantis showed up as he rammed into Hildy, knocking her clean away from Roger, Wildy, Wilbur, and Lola. You leave my friends alone, shouted Monty. Hildy sprang to her feet and bit Monty on his tail end. Your so-called friends trespassed on my homestead and started bullying my daughter. I'm sorry, Miss Hildy. I didn't know that's what my friends came here to do, replied Monty. Well, you should have thought about that before you rammed into me. Maybe you need to be taught a lesson, too. Just then, Pete and Chester the Wise showed up. Hildy, shouted Pete Mantis, back away from my son or you'll deal with me. Your son attacked me first, said Hildy. That's because you were about to hurt my friend, said Monty. Your friends were trespassing on my homestead and bullying my daughter, explained Hildy. That's enough, said Chester to Wise. Then the wise old walking stick began to address the situation. First off, Roger, Wilbur, Archibald, Bubba, and Babette, and Lola, your parents are on their way here and will be here soon. You children came here as trespassers, as Miss Hildy said with the intent on bullying young Gertie, who was minding her own business. Even though you children might have been hurt or worse, Miss Hildy acted justly and like any parent would act. Chester is right, Hildy. You did act justly, and I'd like any, and like any parent would, in protecting her young. I apologize for myself and my son, said Pete Mantis. Then Pete Mantis turned to his son. Monty, do you have anything to say to Mrs. Hildy? Yes, father, replied Monty. Mrs. Hildy, I am sorry too. Then Monty turned to Gertie and said, I am so sorry, Gertie. I didn't know my friends came here to pick on you the way they did. That was wrong. I would like for us to be good friends. I would like that too, replied Gertie. Thank you. Well, if that doesn't beat all, exclaimed Hildy. Pete, I heard rumors that you and your son are good-hearted creatures, and now I have seen and heard this for myself. Hildy continued. Monty, you and my daughters can be friends at heart, but you cannot ever come over here to play with her. My daughter and I, unlike you and your friends, are not insects. We are spiders who eat other insects. However, because you and your father have shown us kindness, I am going to do the same. From this day on, you and your friends will have nothing to fear from us. We will know each of you from other insects because spiders have a strong sense for these things. Then Chester, the wise old walking stick, addressed the insect children. Children, it seems to me that despite what you came over here to do, Miss Hildy has shown you a lot more than kindness. Do you have anything you would like to say to her? Lola replied, Mrs. Hildy, we are very sorry for what we did. 
We were wrong, and we too would like to be friends with Gertie from now on. Thank you, Lola, said Gertie. I would like that very much. That is very sweet, Lola, said Gertie's mother, but the same rule I explained to Maudie applies to you and your friends, too. Just then, the parents of the insects showed up. The queen bee was outraged along with the other insect parents and yelled, What are you kids doing over talking with these black widow spiders? Also, didn't we make it clear to you that you are to stay away from this praying mantis? Don't talk about Monty that way, Gertie retorted. He is my friend. Then an angry Hildy chimed in at the insect parents. How dare you? This praying mantis just saved your kids from being hurt or worse. Your kids, whom you think are so much better than Monty, came over here to bully my daughter. Hildy the Black Widow continued. Despite what your children came over here to do, Monty stepped in and helped them. Your kids and my daughter want to be friends with Monty because he has a good heart. You are very lucky that your children have Monty as a friend. I told Monty and your children that they can be friends with Gertie, but they cannot come over here to play with her for a good reason. You don't even want your kids to be friends with Monty. And that is not for a good reason, but pure prejudice. Now get off my property. <laughs> Hildy, I think I can take it from here. I need to have a few words with the parents and the children, said Chester to Wise. Thank you, Chester. My daughter and I need to get back to building our new web, Hildy replied. Hildy turned back toward the queen bee and said, Don't let me see you or your three stuck-up comrades anywhere near this woodpile ever again until you apologize to Pete and Monty. That is, of course, unless you like the thought of being a... Unless you like the thought of the four of you being a four-course meal. Also, it wouldn't hurt if you apologized to me as well. Come along, Gertie. The two black widow spiders returned to the woodpile. Then Chester the Wise gathered all the insect children and their parents at the rose bush, which was a short distance from the woodpile, and he began to address them. First off, children, do you understand why Mrs. Hildy said you cannot go back to the woodpile to play with young Gertie, even though you are now friends with her? Asked Chester the Wise. Bubba Bee answered, It's because spiders eat insects? That is correct, Bubba, replied Chester, but also Mrs. Hildy has to teach her daughter how to gather food for herself, and Gertie can't learn to do that very well if she is playing with her food. <laughs> do you get my meaning? Yes, we do, replied Wilbur Ant. The other insect children were in agreement with Wilbur. Then Chester began to address the parents. Every living creature that walks upon the earth was created by God, the creator of all living things. Even though God, the creator, has placed the humans over us, and all other living creatures that walk upon the earth, every creature is important and serves God's purpose. Chester the Wise continued, Now Hildy the Black Widow may have spoken very harshly to you in saying you were acting out of prejudice in not letting your children be friends with Monty because he was a little different. Yet your children very much wanted very much for Monty to hang out with them. As I just said, all creatures play an important role on this planet, and we should never 
regard one being less important than the others because we are all important in maintaining the balance of nature, which this planet can't survive without. Along with the creatures that roam this planet, God the Creator also created plants, which play an important role as well. Plants provide food for all insects and other creatures who feed on plants. What would happen if there weren't enough plants on the earth? A lot of us would starve. But what would happen if there were too many insects? There would be a lot fewer plants. And because plants give off oxygen, which all creatures, including humans, need to survive, a lot of creatures would die. That is where spiders like Hilni and young Gertie come in. We think of them as our enemies because they eat insects, but spiders keep the balance of nature by helping to keep the insect population under control so that there are enough plants on this planet. Insects are not the only creatures that need plants to feed on and breathe in oxygen. Mr. Chester, what keeps the spider population under control so there are not too many of them, asked Archibald B. Chester the Wise replied, I mentioned that insects are plant eaters, but there are a few insects that eat spiders as well as plants. Mr. Chester, should I tell everyone? Asked Monty Mantis. I think you should, replied Chester the Wise. Then Monty Mantis addressed all the insect friends and their parents. Praying mantises eat black widows as well as plants, and they are immune to a black widow's venom. You saw Mrs. Hildy bite me, but as you can see, I am a little sore, but I am fine. Wow, exclaimed the queen ant. I never knew that about praying mantises. There's a lot of things you don't know about me or my son, retorted Pete Mantis. Maybe you should spend some time getting to know other living beings who are different from you before you make prejudgments and hurt their feelings like you did with my son. You are right, Pete said Mama Butterfly. We owe you and Monty an apology. We are sorry. Mama Ladybug approached Monty Mantis and said, Monty, from now on, you are welcome to play with Lola anytime you want to. The same goes for me. You are welcome to hang out with Bad Bad anytime you want, said Mama Butterfly. Monty, you can hang out with my two sons anytime, said the queen bee. Hildy the Black Widow said that you and your father had good hearts, and she was right. That goes for me and my sons, too, said the queen ant. I just wish we can apologize to Hildy as well, but she does not want us anywhere near that woodpile. She was pretty mad. I will give Hildy the message, said Chester the Wise. Chester continued to address the other insects. Monty and his father could have killed Mrs. Hildy if they had wanted to. They chose to show their kindness instead. Mrs. Hildy wanted to harm all the insect children at first because they were bullying her daughter, young Gertie. But when Mrs. Hildy was shown kindness, she wasn't so mean. A black widow's venom can be deadly to even a human, but if she senses that the human means her no harm, she usually won't attack and bite the human. The same goes for other creatures. When spiders are showed kindness from other creatures, they can be very friendly, as you saw with Mrs. Hildy. The moral of the story is this. We should not judge others by outward appearances, but by their hearts. 
If we strive to show others kindness, then we will eventually receive kindness in return. These are keys to lasting friendships. So from that time on, Monty Mantis had many happy adventures with his insect friends. They never went near the woodpile, but once in a while they saw Gertie from a distance and waved to her, and the young black widow and her mother waved back. Gertie and the insect children remained friends at hearts. So as Chester, the wise old walking stick, said, remember, God the Creator made all of us special, and we should treat others with kindness. The end of the story. But now we go to the epilogue back in the classroom of Waldoville Elementary School. After Miss Regan's finished reading the reading of Monty Mantis, she asked the class this question. There are a lot of lessons which can be learned from this story I just read to you. Can someone tell me one of the one of them? Sammy Schumann raised his hand. Yes, Sammy, said Miss Regans. I think the golden rule we learned once in Sunday school applies here, which is to do um do to others what you want them to do to you. Yes, the golden rule does apply here, Sammy. Well done, said Miss Regans. The teacher continued. Other than the moral of the story, which you heard, are there any other important lessons you can learn from this book? Henry Bowman raised his hand. Yes, Henry. What did you learn? asked Miss Regans. Henry replied, nothing ever ends well for bullies who pick on someone just because he is different. Thank you, Henry, and you are right. Nothing ever ends well for bullies. Gail Goodenson raised her hand. Yes, Gail, what lesson did you learn? Asked Miss Regans, and Gail said, Every one of us is important, no matter how different a person might be. You are absolutely right, Gail. Just then, Seymour Weagles walked in which, with a big ice chest of green popsicles from his popsicle shop. I asked Mr. Wiggles to bring in some green popsicles from his shop to help celebrate the first day of spring before we go home for the weekend. There are enough green popsicles for the entire class, said Miss Regans. All the children enjoyed their surprises from Miss Regans and Mr. Wiggles. After they finished their popsicles, the children went home for the weekend. They learned a lot of valuable lessons from the story Miss Regans read to them. And those lessons stuck with them so much that Henry, Sammy, Gail, and all the other kids in Miss Regan's class remained good friends for a good many years. That's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed the classroom reading of Monty Mantis. And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Good night now.